Hi there, friends and YouTubers, and welcome to my first video where I'll be ranking some political leaders from yesteryear to yesterday. I'm not a native English speaker, you know, so this will be somewhat of a struggle, but as this list is about ranking the presidents of the United States, it seems right to talk in a language that more people than my ordinary Swedish friends and perhaps some Nordic neighbors could understand. Instead of an ordinary tire list, I'll try to put every president on a single place right up from number 1 down to number 46. Or perhaps to number 45, since I'll only put Cleveland who served both as the 22nd and 24th president on a single place. Please respect that this is only the opinion of a one single old salt, made in July 2024, not anything that's been done after years of studies. I'll do my best to say a few words of each of the presidents, even though it's hard to find anything to say about old Tippecanoe, who only lasted for a month or so. Well, here we go. And we will do this in a chronological way. Well, George Washington is up there, I have to admit. He implemented a strong, well-financed national government and is one who set the title of Mr. President and the two-term tradition. One of the greatest of them all, I think, and uh, I will put him at number one, just for the sake of it. As a founding father and vice president to Washington, John Adams was great. As a president, he had his faults. He struggled with the French Revolution, his solid neutrality policy led to criticism from other founding fathers. But the, the biggest issue, however, were the Alien and Sedition Acts, who set the restrictions to immigration and to the freedom of speech. On the plus account, Adams was against slavery and never owned any own slaves. That's uh, good for its time. I'll put him at number 24. As with Adams, Jefferson's greatest achievements came before his presidency. The Louisiana Purchase, which doubled the nation's size, was a big win, though. He was also able to reduce military forces following successful no negotiations with France. His views on and relationship with slavery drags him down, though. Jefferson must be seen as, as somewhat better than Adams. He'll get the 21st place on my list. Well, Madison was great in many ways, but as with his predecessors, his greatest achievement was joining Alexander Hamilton and John Jay writing the Federalist Papers, and that was done before his presidency. He was a quite poor presidential leader during the War of 1812, and his view on Native Americans and slavery were extremely poor, even for its days. Therefore, I'll put him below the other three, giving him place number 27 for now.
the last of the founding fathers to become president and the first one without those ridiculous wigs. But uh, that's not the reason why I put James Monroe at number 14. No, instead he had the benefit of putting together a very strong administration during his presidential term. That led to an era of good feelings and Monroe could actually run unopposed for his second term. He worked for conciliation with Britain and with the Monroe Doctrine he announced America's opposition to any European intervention in America. Place number 14. The son of John Adams had a brilliant mind, but struggled as a president. His party split in two, and he had problems to get his policies through the Congress. On the plus note is his program for building roads, water locks and support railways through the country. He was also against slavery and were one of the first who talked about gender equality. Therefore, I'll put him in my top 20. Often seen as an advocate for ordinary Americans, white men that is, this $20 bill president was indeed a racist. His Indian Removal Act can't be described as anything else than ethnic cleansing. Please google Trail of Tears if you want to know more about those awful things he did when in office. However, he did pay off the national debt and that is his only redemption. Place 37 for now. One of the founders of the Democratic Party and a quite dull president who failed to handle the panic of 1837 he was against slavery though, that's nice to notice. I'll put him in place 25 for now. Well, this war hero had a fantastic slogan and campaign song, Tippecanoe and Tyler too. What could go wrong with that? Well, he died after only a month in office. He will get a spot in top 40, but that's mainly for the great slogan. He hadn't time to do anything in the presidential office. Tyler was the first vice president to succeed a dying president and he was nearly always in conflict with his party. His administration resigned and he was called his accidency by the Whigs, his former party. He did better with his foreign work though and uh, he made some treaties with Britain and with China. Well, perhaps he deserves a uh, 38th place for now? I think so. James K. Park was an effective president who achieved what he wanted to do just in one term. The things he did, though, weren't that great. For sure, he expanded the U.S. all the way to the Pacific coast, but many lives were lost. He made America greater, but he also divided the nation, making the civil war come closer. Place 29 for now.
Taylor was the quite bland president who served only for 16 months. He did promote a soft approach towards slavery and didn't push for expansion. He owned slave himself though. I place him in the 36th place. Yeah, that will do. The last president from the Whigs was constantly torn between the party's northern and southern fractions. It's easy to say he ended up supporting the wrong side of history, not least by signing the Fugitive Slave Act. Number 39 is somewhat high for this president, but there's worse to come. It's hard to not feel sorry for Pierce. All three kids died young, the last one in a horrible train crash just ahead of his inauguration. His wife blamed him for it, got depressed, and Pierce himself sought comfort in heavy drinking. As president he supported the Kansas-Nebraska Act leading to expansion of slavery. There's no redemption for that. He took several steps towards the civil war. I'll put him in the 42nd place for now. From bad to worse, Buchanan was a doe face and worked for pro-slavery as president. He angered both the new formed Republican Party and his own Democratic Northerners. Only one president has been worse in my opinion, so Buchanan gets the 44th place. Lincoln is an American hero for his leadership and for his efforts to abolish slavery once and for all. Everyone knows that. Of course he'll be second after Washington in my list. Did you know that there's a clip from a TV show here on YouTube where you can hear a person who saw when Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theatre in Washington DC back in 1865. You definitely should look that up. I'll leave a link in the description. The third vice president stepping in when his predecessor died, Andrew Johnson vetoed most of the attempts to rule out southern actions to deprive the freedmen of civil liberties. That's after the Civil War. His strong opposition against federally guaranteed rights for black Americans makes him the worst president to ever have been in the presidential office. Last place for sure. One of Grant's biggest achievements in office was to create the Justice Department and he worked hard to protect the African Americans during Reconstruction. He wasn't flawless though. There were problems with corruption in his administration, but he did modernize America with a lot of well-needed reforms. I'll grant Grant the seventh place on my list. Generally being a quite modest and forgettable president, his biggest fault was to send the US Army to resolve a railroad strike, and it ended up to be the deadliest conflict in America ever in peace time. The 32nd place for now.
being an avid spokesperson for agricultural reforms, for civil rights and for anti-corruption, Garfield could have been one of America's best presidents. But it wasn't meant to be. His term was cut short only after a few months in office, when he was shut down and then treated poorly by his doctor. Due to this brief tenure in office, he'll end up as my number 34, but he could have been one of the greatest. He really could. In Sweden, he is best remembered by the old song Har du hört den förskräckliga händelsen, den är sann för den händer just nu. När kungen av nordliga Amerika blev skjuten mitt i tu. Arthur earned some respect during his own time, but in my opinion he is one of the more forgettable presidents to ever hold office. He did attempt to reduce tariffs and he also signed the Civil Service Reform Act that made merits more important than political contacts. I wonder if that law is still in use in America today? Well. Arthur gets a spot at my top 30. Place 30, indeed. The only president this far to serve during two non-consecutive presidential terms. Therefore Cleveland is both the 22nd and 24th president. His first term was quite successful and he was a committed liberalist who fought against corruption and he was against imperialism and opposed the ideas to annex Hawaii. Cleveland deserves a place just outside my top 10. He gets the 11th place. Now Harrison came in right in between President Cleveland's two terms and he wasn't that bad really, but he was quite forgettable. His strong commitment for voting rights for black American comes to mind. Uh, I suppose he's one of those forgetful middle of the road presidents who could have and should have done more. He gets a 23rd place on my list. McKinley was yet another middle-of-the-road president and he was yet another president whose tenure got cut short due to the fact he was killed off during his second term. During his presidency the American economy had a steady growth but he was an imperialist and he did annex Hawaii. I'll put him in the 26th place for now. The older Roosevelt is this far the youngest person to hold the presidential office. He was 42 years old when he came into office. His big interest of preserving nature led to several established national parks, forests and monuments. He's also the first American to win a Nobel Prize, the Peace Prize of 1906. His trust-busting work to provide pure food and fairness was very progressive for its time. Theodore deserves a place in the top six for sure. Taft was the president who worked hardest with trust busting and he also tried to abolish war by enforcing other solutions to end conflicts as diplomacy. In fact, his speech about abolition of war is still relevant to listen to even in our days. 
Taft is one of a few presidents who didn't like to be in office. After he left, he served as Chief Justice. He was the only president to do so. Taft will reach my top 10. Yeah, he does. Wilson was a well-educated academic and his support for a diplomatic post-war solution in Europe was incorporated in the Treaty of Versailles as the League of Nations. However, his stern arrogance towards Congress made it impossible for America to sign the deal. Wilson was a racist and his active support for racial segregation is the reason I'll put him at the bottom half of my list. 35th place for now. Harding's term was cut short due to the fact he died. The first natural death in office since Tyler in the 1850s. Corruption blossomed during Harding's days in the presidential office, so in my list he goes down as one of the worst presidents. Place 43 will do. Coolidge was a cool president indeed. Among his greatest achievements was the Indian Citizenship Act, which granted US citizenship for all Native Americans. His stance for racial equality is praised and the economy grew rapidly during his tenure. However, he failed to use his, this economic boom to prevent the economic depression of the 1930s. Silent Cal goes up to a 15th place for me. Yeah, that will do. Sometimes it takes more than a great person to become a great president. Hoover was indeed a very good man. During the First World War he led a food project saving millions of people in Belgium from starvation. But as a president he had to face the stock market crash of 1929 and the Great Depression that followed. And he didn't do well. On the plus note is that he nominated the first non-white person as a vice president. His VP was a Native American named Charles Curtis, and that's more than 80 years before America saw its next non-white person in office as president or vice president. I'll put Hoover at spot 28. We are now coming to an era of several good presidents in a row. Beginning with Franklin D. Roosevelt who implemented the New Deal which lifted America out of the depression and into a time of relief and economic recovery. During the Second World War he supervised the mobilization and supported a Europe first strategy. He is the only president serving for more than two terms and after he died the law was changed so that no other president will be able to serve more than two terms. Roosevelt deserves a spot in top 5 on my list. Truman was a very effective president and he oversaw the establishment of the United Nations after World War II. He worked for a continuation of the New Deal, a work that brought America's expanding middle class to new wealth. He proposed legislations about civil rights, but those got turned down by the Congress. 
Truman earns a spot at number 13 in my list. President Ike continued the New Deal and expanded social security. He tried to pass a strong Civil Rights Act, but it got filibustered down by the Congress to a decent first step while not going as far as first intended. Eisenhower created the Space Administration NASA and he ended the Korean War. His era was somewhat of a new era of good feelings. I'll put him in my third spot. I like Ike. Everybody likes Ike. The world has never been under such a risk for a full-scale nuclear war as under President Kennedy's watch, but he grew under the occasion and in some way, with a little help from the Pope, managed to stop that from becoming reality. He supported the civil rights movement and was partly successful to pass his new frontier domestic policies. Kid off in the streets of Dallas in 1963, Kennedy is the most recent president to die in office. In my top list, he comes in on the fourth place. Not without his faults, but still a very important president with a focus on expanding civil rights and access to healthcare. Domestically, he's responsible for the Medicare and the Medicaid and the very important Civil Rights Acts of 1964, 1965 and 1968. The big issue with his foreign policies, especially the Vietnam War. For the importance of his domestic policies, I'll grant him the 12th place on my list. Nixon was a crook, but he was competent and started diplomatic relations with China and the detente policies with the Soviet Union led to important steps for the events of the following decade. He created the Environmental Protection Agency and was responsible for acts on clean air and for the protection of endangered species. He also took several steps for getting Native Americans more included in the society. The downfall of his presidency was the Watergate scandal and him trying to cover up his own administration's involvement. For a crook, he still did some good. I'll put him as my 31st president. Ford continued the detente in the Cold War by signing the Helsinki Accords and he faced the recession of the 70s with quite good skills, even if he wasn't in office long enough to see its payoffs. He pardoned Nixon for the Watergate scandal. In the long term it was probably needed to unite the country, but there and then it was very controversial. He worked quite hard for equal rights, and when it comes to abortion rights, he became more and more a pro-choice president. I'll put him in my 18th spot on the list for now. Carter is one of those examples that being great as a human being isn't always the same as being a great president. His domestic policies showed some good skills in creating the Department of Education and taking steps for new technology to solve energy crisis and more. He also drafted the Panama Canal Treaty, which was a very good decision. 
but him ending detente, imposing embargo against the Soviet Union, did escalate the Cold War after a few more relaxed years. So I'll put Carter as my 22nd place of my list. Reagan's somewhat controversial economic policies led to low unemployment and low inflation. For America it was yet another era of good feelings, but it came with a price. The national debt led to crisis after the end of his term. He increased the military spending, but his policies, combined with political changes in Moscow, contributed to the end of the Cold War. Reagan was very conservative, but with a human pathos. I'll put Reagan at number 17 in my list for now. Bush 41 was the last one of the heroes from the Second World War to be president. Being a combat pilot, having his aircraft shut down outside Japan and then being saved from the waves by a submarine probably shaped his views of the world. With great skills he played a key role in the reunification of Germany and put an end to the Cold War. His domestic policies delivered great improvements for Native Americans and for Americans with disabilities. He also worked for clean air and an immigration act with family-based immigration visa. The economy crisis left after Reagan made Bush to break his promises to rise any taxes. He made a deal with the Democrats to rise taxes. Controversial, but necessary. I put George Bush, the elder, in my top 10. He'll get the ninth place on my list. Clinton is the first of a whoppering four person born in the 1940s to become president. His presidency led to the longest period of peacetime economic expansion in the American history. He was for free trade and signed the NAFTA into law. On foreign issues, his work for intervention in the Bosnian and Kosovo wars led to the Dayton Peace Agreement. He also played an important role for the peace process between Israel and Palestine and for the Northern Ireland peace process. Yet another skilled and good president. He'll get my number 8 on the list. Bush 43 Dabaya Bush is yet another example that a possibly good-hearted person doesn't always become a great president. If the 9-11 didn't happen, who knows what his presidency may have been. Perhaps his education reform bill, leaving no child left behind, or his policies for AIDS relief would have been things he would be remembered for. Now it's the disastrous invasion of Iraq not listening to the United Nations, who he is remembered for. His work with the financial crisis and the lack of support after Hurricane Katrina wasn't that brilliant either, so Bush the Younger gets a place at the 33rd spot on my list. We're almost there now, only three more to go. Barack Obama was the second non-white person on a winning presidential ticket after Hoover Curtis back in 1929 and the first non-white person to become president ever. 
His stimulus package to address the financial crisis led to a speedy recovery for America's economy. During Obama's administration, Osama bin Laden was killed in the Neptune Spear operation. He somewhat normalized America's relations with Iran and with Cuba and was the first president to openly support same-sex marriage and inclusion for LGBT Americans. Obama is worth a spot in my top 20. I'll put him at my 16th place. One of the most controversial presidents in office, Trump is the only president to have been impeached twice. His handling of the pandemic making the US having the 15th highest death toll per million inhabitants in the world with about 3100 deaths per million inhabitants was a big failure made worse by Trump himself. Leaving the Paris Agreement on climate change and talking good about totalitarian leaders like Putin and Kim Jong-un was also big disappointments of his term in office. On the positive note must be mentioned that he did understand what the big left behind groups of America's population wanted. He gave them a voice of well needed criticism of the somewhat corrupted gerrymandering processes of Congress. At the time I'm making this video, he just survived an assassination attempt getting shot with a bullet touching his ear. Perhaps he'll be doing a Cleveland and have a second term in office after the elections. For now, I'll put Trump on a 41st spot in my list. Well, here we are then. Joseph Robinette Biden, the fourth president born in the 1940s, has brought back America to its family of allies instead of talking good about totalitarian leaders. During his term, Finland and Sweden joined NATO, and his work to support Ukraine after Russia's invasion deserves respect. Domestically, Biden's work for Medicare and to lower the price for medicine has been vital for many poor people. The Inflation Reduction Act has worked quite well and his bills on infrastructure and manufacturing has led to improvement. This old timer has done better than many people foresaw before his term. Biden deserves a place in my top 20 he'll get the 19th spot on my list. Well, that's all folks. Here's my presidential ranking list. How would you score the presidents? If you liked this list and video, please like and subscribe to this channel. Have a nice day!